Hi, I'm Damien. Welcome to Project Brewpeg. We're turning a sunken fishing trawler into a global expedition and research boat. We're community funded and you can get on board. Today, we're going to make a gate. Nothing's going to go wrong and everything is going to go exactly as we are planning it. So the plan today is the back end of brew peg was cut open a wee while ago now. So this is, if you hang right over the back, that's going to be water eventually, as opposed to trailers and other parts. What the plan is, the piece of steel that we cut out is this piece here. So we're going to chop this into like a bifold type arrangement. Well, potentially, that's our thought at the moment. Who knows if that's going to be what we end up doing. So what we've got to do is build hinges on the back of this. We're going to clean the top. You can see there's quite a lot of manky sort of steel and old pipeworks and stuff that was welded there when this was a fishing boat. That's all going to be cleaned up and then we're going to figure out how to hinge this. So the plan is to basically build like a bifold type arrangement, gap down the middle, with each door swinging open on the outside, mainly because the transom on this boat breaks forward. So well, up from the deck up, it breaks forward. So if we were to try and open it on the inside, it just you'd end up jamming it up against the deck all the time. So we have to swing it outwards, um, which means we have to build our hinges sort of proud quite a bit, um, so that it doesn't obviously bind up when we have when we start taking into account the curve of the back end of the boat. Um, so first step, I think we'll start sizing this up and then come up with a bit of a plan as to what we're going to build. So. When I took this off I cut it with a 3mm disc all the way around so we've got a bit of a gap um, to take account of any sort of misalignment or anything like that. But this is a pretty manky piece of steel. Um, actually let me show you some of the bends. So you can see the top's pretty garbage, there's bits of rubbish all over it. But also if you look down the hull here you can sort of see there's a lot of dent marks and bash marks and stuff all the way down. Right down the bottom here you can sort of see there's a big kink going on. Um, it's a wee bit hard to see in the camera, but yeah, none of this is straight. Brewpeg being a fishing trawler, got a hell of a life. Bits of, I'll spin that around, you can see sort of dents all the way around the back end of the boat. Um, this is where predominantly stuff got dragged up and over the side of the boat. So um, hence we're dealing with a pretty manky piece of steel. We're going to weld it in, in, in place, put the hinges on, and then split it in half. Yeah. So we're kind of wondering about the alignment sides of things, so yeah, that's why we're thinking build the hinges first and then chop it up. Alright, let's weld this in. <laughs> as as measured on my custom gauges that tell me so. <laughs> Fuck. Nothing's gonna go wrong. No. I think we need a. Jess is down here editing in amongst all of the bashing around of steel. Blown out. I can't quite see it because it's quite bright for me, but I know I can't see it. It's um, blown out 
the that copper tip that's coming off to the side, so the jet of air is going off on the piss uh, for some reason. I don't know why it's doing that thing. So, um, so let's clean that up and we can mark out our others. Yeah. So that's the shape that we eventually came to and they kind of work like that so you'll have two opposing each other with a bit of a gap in the middle um, and then when they are in the open position they kind of do that and hold the door out from the side of the boat and in the closed position they sort of sit like that. So we're going to go through and mark these out and cut. Uh, we need four to be able to see if it's even going to work so we'll do that now. We're going to cut all of these little teardrops out and then grind them all up so that they're all the same shape. That is going to become our hinges. After three weeks of hard work, Richard headed back to America and Damien had an appointment in Brisbane for work. They were on an early plane together. Okay, so we're trying to drill these um, hinges that we've just created. I'm not a huge fan of drilling stainless. Um, it's a bit of a mission. Um, so I bought these incredibly whiz-bang expensive drills. Um, I'm assuming they're like cobalt or something like that. Although they don't say it, they say Nick Steel, which doesn't inspire me with a huge amount of confidence. But the thing that's pretty neat about them, I don't know if you can see it on there, but the tip is quite cool. So it's got a bit of a back cut going on but also right up on the actual point here as well so that the back cut comes all the way up I don't know if that makes any difference but um let's give it a go see if we can get these things to drill so this is just a pilot hole in case you're wondering this is a pilot hole with one of my regular drill bits which I'm not expecting to last but we'll see how it goes it's only because i don't have one of these whoopie doo drill bits in this right size oh it makes me nervous See daylight. What are you doing? I'm drilling stainless. It's working. Yeah. All right. First, whiz bang drill bit. I really, really wasn't expecting it to do this. By that I mean work. Actually, let's go and get the real slow drill for this big one.
So my little battery drill here is incredibly powerful in terms of torque and all that sort of stuff. So it's a great drill to use for these sort of things where I need to go really slow, plus being DC, I can turn it incredibly slow. I've got really good trigger control with this thing versus like an AC drill where it's more just on off. Being stainless, you want to cut quite slow in terms of RPM, but quite um, a lot of pressure downwards. And you want to have really good drill bits, obviously. She's working. didn't get all the way through so what I have managed to do is chip the cutting surface off this drill let me see if I can show you so this is the drill tip you see that that cutting surface there is okay that cutting surface has a big manky hole cut out of it um, it's basically obviously bound up on a bit of stainless and chipped it off I don't know if you can sharpen these, I'm going to give it a go and see if it works. Um, either way I can't use this drill right now, so nothing to lose. So this is going to be a good test. This is my drill post me having a go at sharpening it. So I think it's like a, I don't know, a hardened surface or like a coated surface or something, cobalt or something pretty decent. I uh, don't necessarily know if it's going to work with this sharpening. Actually I'm not 100% happy with that side, but yeah, I don't know. Let's see if it's going to work, eh? Cutting. Huh, did not expect to be saying that. Oh, oh. Did it. It only gone and didn't bloody did it. Nice. Righto. Now that we've got that drilled, we throw a bolt in it. And that's going to be our central point of truth. So we can start grinding the shape of these hinges so that all of them are the same outside shape and they're all going to be centered on that one hole. You can call me
So, another really hot day. Me and some tarp up, we're going to finish the gate today. But first of all, we are making a little um, sandbox to mish for him to do his business in. So what we're doing is, this is going to be his pee box, twin pee box, and we're going to cut a little gap because he's too short to get over the side. <laughs> He may be able to get in, but he won't easily get out. So we're making a little doorway. So then we're going to cut that with the grinder. So because Mish will be walking through this little door to go to the toilet, we have to clean it up so there's no sharp edges. We're going to make it all smooth and round for him. Fluffy dog safe. Fluffy dog safe. Training him to pee in a, buck, in a space like this on a boat, it's um, there's a couple of stages. The first thing is getting used to walking in and out and getting used to the sand. Because the sand will smell different than beach sand. He's very used to beach sand, but this will be different. That said, when we used to dry sand on the back of the boat here for our wet water blaster, <laughs> he used to love climbing on the piles of sand. Yeah. Like Particularly if you're sweeping it up, it was his sand, so he'd, <laughs> you'd sweep it into a pile and he'd sit himself right on top. So, this is what Mishka sees. That's his face. What we'll do is we'll capture a little bit of urine when he pees one morning. He doesn't like me doing it, but I can capture a little bit in a container. And we'll just put some driftwood in here and put his pee in here. And usually that's enough for him to, to trigger, oh, that's my pee spot. Um, and within a couple of days he's he's getting used to it and he's using it. So tell us, darling, what do you think about your sandbox? Not much. <laughs> A biggie, eh? So today I'm using my new uh, MIG welding gun. It's a brand new beastie that I just bought. Um, it's not an expensive thing, but it's a huge step up from what I have been using. The plan, this is one side of the gate, so the plan is to basically weld these hinges here onto this part of the gate here. So I'm going to tack them on today and then we'll um, weld them, once we've got all four hinges put on, we'll weld them up properly. 
So a while back I built a human rated lift for Jess to be able to get up and down the back of the boat. Um, it's got a built in safety, it's got a retractable seat belt that um, if anything happens it jams up and stops her from crashing off the back. I'm going to be using this today so that I can hang off the back of the boat and figure out exactly um, how to line these hinges up. I've got to make sure that they're square to each other so that the gate doesn't jam when I try and open it. So with those two hinges welded on, I've now got to go down and start plasmering out hinge three and four. Um, we were having quite a bit of drama with our plasma last time when Richard was here trying to cut these out, so um, we'll see if we can get it going again, get into those. So these are the four that we've cut out, so same deal as before, they're basically welded together, it's on the underside, you can't see it, but what we're going to do now is go through with the grinder and smash down all of those manky old uh, edges and get them nice and smooth just like we had done the last four. Now you need some lunch, eh? Hey? All done? Ready for lunch? Feel better? Yes, you do. So we went shopping and when we got back, this is what we found at the end of the road. A big fire, it looks like a burn off. So we've just been to the local dump and we've found a couple of shelves because we're sick of not having any organisation. We keep going. We'll be finished soon, we don't need to worry about it. But that's not true. We're here for a few more months, so we're going to make it easier on Damien and his tools. Get them off the ground, keep them looked after. And we found this. Five bucks! Woohoo! What's this called, though? Uh, I don't know, sack barrow? Sack barrow? I don't know, there's lots of Probably. nice things. Trolley thing, yeah. One of those. I'm thinking of the wheels for the, um, the welder, changing them out. But in the meantime, it'll make moving stuff around the boat much easier. The trouble with these drills is they're centering drills, so they've only got a small, they're really strong because they've got this big solid shank, but they've only got a small amount of teeth. So I was drilling too fast because this has gone purple, but if I get below that depth there, they start to snap because the swarf coming up has got nowhere to go. So they break the drills off. So you need to drill slower? Uh, no, it's not really about speed, it's about depth. I can't really, speed's relevant. I have, well, I have to drill slower to, to stop the drill from overheating. But if I drill down too far, the, um, the drill ends up basically breaking. There we go. Lovely. Coal bolt. Is that the answer, is it? That's the answer. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yeah. Right. I've got a set of high speed steel drills, and as I'm breaking them, or whatever, you know, they're getting destroyed, I'm replacing them with coal bolt. So, so far I have a 5 and a 10 mil. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's a very slow way to get a cobalt set, but it works. Mm. Actually, is that any good? No, it 
Easy, shall we? I need to put it lower. Um, okay, so I've gone through and, and drilled this and this hole is going to be my point of truth So I'll stick this bolt in and nip it up um, And that basically means that no matter what I do because this now that it's been sort of ground and cleaned up The weld is not going to hold it but almost certainly the weld's going to break any minute now And basically these will all come loose so by putting this in it means that I can hold them all um, Uniform and even and I can go through and linish all of this and get it really beautiful because you can still see there's a few blemishes and stuff to take out I've got um, if you have a look on this side, uh, maybe three or four mil, maybe three mil that I have to take off this radius all the way around and that's going to get rid of a lot of these blemishes. But by taking off that much meat, it's going to um, essentially unweld it. So the weld's only on the surface and by ripping down that far, it's going to basically, yeah, remove it. So I need to put this bolt in now so that I can hold it all together. So now that we've got them down to that level, you can sort of see they're roughly, they're all pretty much even all the way around. There's a couple of little blemishes, but they're on the inside. I'm not too stressed about them, and they'll come out when we start angling the, the corners, like 45ing them and stuff like that. What I've got to do now is go through and start linishing them so that they're all identical to each other, because at the moment they're still ever so slightly different. I want to make sure they're all the same. Okay, this is a really great example. You can see there's highs and lows, so when I start linishing it, it all becomes even, and all of these little low spots that are the grain of the sander was going that way obviously at the time they all get basically polished out so I'll go over the whole thing and linish them and they'll end up being identical Okay, so now that we've got the outside sorted, I need to get the each of the flat faces, top and bottom. Um, so that face there, and, and the obviously the other opposite side. I need to get those nice and looking lovely, and then clean up all of the edges. Cripes, that's pretty warm. Yeah, and then go around and clean up 45 all the edges so we don't have any sharp bits to catch our fingers and whatever on. So these are all still welded together. I need a, hopefully a bit of a bop will dislodge them. Okay, there's one. That needs more of a bop. Doing this one-handed, trying to bash some stainless <laughs> at the same time as holding a camera. Alright, I'm going to have to use two hands on this. Okay. One down. So there we go, our four hinge plates. So you can sort of see if I come right down onto this corner here, there's a bit of mankiness around the corner that I need to clean up. That was from the weld. Um, obviously a couple of welds are a bit stronger than I thought and it's, it's sort of pulled the edge of the steel off. That's all good, I can clean that up um, when I 45 it. I might just have to 45 it a little bit harder than I was hoping to. Um, but either way, it's, it's not gonna affect the way this hinge works in any way. Okay, so next step is back up onto the linishing belt. We're gonna go after the sides of these. We're gonna to wanna to get these um, looking at like brushed stainless, basically, is, is the look that I'm going for, but I essentially wanna make sure that I've got no high or, or, uh, or low spots I'm too worried about, but definitely high spots I wanna clean off, because when these slide over each other, I just don't want anything to bind up.
All right, so first off you can, I do just one good hard sort of blast on it to see where all the high and low spots are. So you can see up, it's pretty much cleaning up pretty good. That one's got a slight bend in it because I had to ch uh, cold chisel the two apart. The weld was a bit too strong. So I'll put that one aside. Um, I'll just make sure I'm not gonna be, yeah, okay, this is a good straight one. So let's, let's have a go with this one first. There you have it, they are the two hinges, so we'll go and uh, flap her off the paint on this gate up the top and we'll go and weld those to the other side. So to figure out where I'm going to put all of the hinges, um, I needed to come up with a measurement for this top, so I'm using a calculator and I basically, I've drawn the line on it, but I essentially tuck it under the lip on the bottom here and then just get my pen and draw it all the way along like that. I've done that on both sides and then that's what I did on the other side, with the, the other hinges that I've just welded. Um, and then from there I measure down to wherever the next hinge goes at the bottom. Um, so this is my source of truth, is this top hinge. Right, here we go. Done. So you have to do the underside as well? Yep. So uh, now I've got to measure down flapper hinge two. Um, so I'll measure down whatever that distance is, flapper hinge 2. I'll probably have to straighten this up because this would have walked upwards, so I have to whack it down. Um, Do you mean then, the hinge itself? Yeah, so it would have, as I weld it, it would have bent up like mm -hmm. that. Mm. Yep. Oh, that's warm. Don't shit on the weld. Are you welding from down there? Do you want me to no, I'm flappering. Can you pass me my uh, face mask, gloves and grinder? So that's what the gate looks like with the welds on this side. I've done a horrid weld on that one there that I'm going to grind off because that's just terrible. So those two are pretty much finished. I just need to weld them on the on the underside of all four pieces. Right over this side, I've got a, I've measured down and I've done a rough line. I've got to flap all that paint off, and then I'm going to get into a precise line, and I'll essentially do exactly what I've done at the top there: weld on a piece, uh, the the last hinge at the bottom. Once I've got that done, I'm in a position to be able to cut the gate open. So. Be careful, you got a grinder in your hand. It's alright. Do you want me to hold you over? No, that's okay. That's all I need. Uh, I need a pen and a um, uh, tape measure. Pen and a what? A uh, vivid and a tape measure. Awesome, thank you. As soon as I put any um, pressure in to anything, even just drawing a pen line, the thing starts spinning away. <laughs> right. 
Are you going to do the underneath ones as well? Yeah. Oh, can you pass it in? Thanks. Okay, so here's to go. Then we're in. Can I have the um, tape music? Mm -hmm. Prettiest of welds, but they'll seem last up lovely. They're not bad, do they? Yeah, they're right. They'll do. Okay. You wanna do it underneath now? Or yeah. Are you hanging? Yeah. Yeah. Is that all you need? All right. The sun's screwing up with my welding mask. Oh, is it? Can you see it all? Uh, flicks on and off again. How do I need a stand? Yeah, it's perfect, it? perfect. Are you going to cut it from the inside? Yep, I'm going to use Oh, I hate that thing. So we've got the four hinges welded on now. I need to slice down the centre to break it apart so that I've got the two gates. I also need to cut the tacks that we put in to hold this plate in while we didn't have hinges. So I'm going to measure that up now and slice it. I'm going to be using the 9 inch grinder. Now normally I recommend using the thinnest cutting wheel that you can if you're trying to cut steel. But because I want a bit of a gap, I'm actually going to be using a 3mm cutting disc on the 9 inch just to, to rip down it. It's going to take a while to cut, um, but it basically means that I'll have a nice 3mm gap all the way down. Um, Same as me having to grind it out later and make that gap a bit wider with a you know 5 inch grinder or whatever it may be. So it's going to save me a bit of time doing it this way around. Sorry, right, Miss, you said you're darling. Oh, 
I love the way you're wearing shorts. Behind the safety piece of plywood. Thank you. Thank you. So to get this out, because we don't want to be cutting it nine inch up on the, the top balancing, we're going to cut it on the ground with a nine inch so Dane gets his gas that he needs. But to get it out, he's had to cut the corners off the lip. and just cleaned up all of the edges and everything and rounded over all of the sharp cuts so that no, nothing's able to grab you or cut you or do anything like that when we're going past. Um, the other thing is rounded corners are much better for paint. Um, a sharp corner, like a sharp cut, it's very difficult to get a good um, coating of paint over it. If you round that off even slightly, you're going to get a much better coating of paint. Um, one flip side is I want to change these doors uh, to be alloy. Um, at the moment they're steel, they're the original hull. Um, and they're pretty heavy, so they're going to turn into guillotines at sea. So if I replace them with alloy, it's much lighter, it's much less chance of causing injury and things like that. Um, the back end of Brewpeg is pretty bashed up. Um, we're not going to be repairing any of that. Um, we're going to be probably doing our own dents. Um, so remembering Brewpeg's a work boat, so we're going to be dragging ROVs and divers and all sorts of you know dinghies and gear and whatever up the back. 
so um, yeah nothing's going to be prettied up um, one thing I have been thinking about is on the top of these gates um, when the boat was a fishing boat at the top of these gates there's sort of all sorts of um, like holes and you know drill drill holes etc and cuts and all that sort of stuff and there's a lot of um, where is it there there's a big rusty bit and where it used to have a stainless bar welded onto it and the and then mild steel's rusted out um, one thought was to cut that off and actually put a new piece of steel on but I'm kind of wondering if I'm going to be replacing these with alloy how much effort do I actually put into these doors um, for now I just need them to, to work and to be safe um, so I think for now I'll just leave them as is and do some sort of basic repair at the top and then so to save the effort for when I go and make these into an alloy door. gone through and basically cleaned up all the edges we've like rounded everything with a flap wheel um, there's a radius on all of these bottom corners so that you can't you know bash yourself on them and open yourself up so an important moment for me on the boat um, I envisioned this little gate thing coming out onto a, a diving platform the gate not the diving platform <laughs> particularly <laughs> that'll come later but this moment is really important to me because yeah it's, it's been a lot of work to get to here so Dame's gonna attach it, we're gonna check that the hinges are work okay, that it's the size is good and everything. And then um, later on we'll sort of do the finishing work, the painting and stuff like that. But right now what we've got to get done is checking that it's okay. Can't see anything with the bolt. Mm. The handle, you're right. It's all good. <gasps> Tight, there's a bit of slag in there I think. The kitchen on. Yeah, a wee bit of welding slag I need to polish off. Pretty good though. Wow. That's why we set them out an inch, so the centre of that pin to the hull is an inch, and we set them out an inch on purpose so that this would be as sort of as flush as we could get to the boat. Mm. But we always kind of knew that this would do a weird angle and whatever, but I'm happy with that. It's It's quite for what it is, it's pretty tidy, I reckon. Rubbish. Oh, that's right, that stuff you want yeah, to Yeah, I've got to clean that right yeah. off. You were involved that finishing work to do. Yeah. That's okay, we'll get to there. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Okay, does it. Wow. Those hinges are nice. There's definitely some. Yeah, hmm. some. Misalignment of some sort going on. Yeah. This top one that's causing the problems. Oh, they look pretty rough, don't they? Better than Benton. These things? Yeah. Yeah, they've had a bit of a hiding. Yeah, you, really, you really see the history of the boat in them. Try lifting the top hinge up slightly. What do you mean? You're going to put a washer between them or something? Yeah, exactly what I'm doing. It's kind of in the second half of the turn, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I could always put a, I could put a smaller bolt in mm. or drill a bigger hole. Um, I think that's probably what's going on actually. The holes aren't quite perfectly aligned and therefore as I turn it, it's trying to it's trying to turn on slightly different angles. Oh yeah, it's catching the bolt. And it's jamming up my bolt. Oh. I reckon that's what's going on. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's something to fix over the weekend when you've got a five minutes. Just want to say hi to Jill and Richard who um, dropped in 
to say hi today. Yeah, it was quite neat seeing him. Yeah. Some, he was, he was, he's living in the Philippines and she was living an hour inland from us. Mm. It was quite cool, got to catch up with him. Yeah. Well, you got to catch up with him. I had to spend <laughs> half the day on the telephone. Yeah, you are busy. <laughs> Grabbing a moment when you could. Yeah. So um, we just wanted to say a really big thanks to Stu from Danga Marine. Um, Stu's got a, a channel like ours. He's um, been doing this for a while. He's rebuilding a little trawler down near Sydney. Um, yeah, it's a neat wee thing, eh? And Danger Island is uh, the, one of the stops we made on our trip up on our yacht up to Brisbane from yeah. Sydney when we left. It's like this little community that literally lives on a, on a tiny little island um, and their boat access only and it's it's awesome. There's like cool little cafes there and there's a little boatyard there and yeah, it's neat. Yeah, well, we really wanted to say thanks because we changed something on our website and we didn't know that the link to access the website yeah. had gone down yeah. and, and Stu got in touch and let us know. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, but also Stu... Yeah, so um, Stu let us know the other day that it's a little steel boat that he's rebuilding. I think it's like 30, 35 foot steel trawler that he's bought. Um, chuck it, have a look in this corner here, there's a link to his website. Um, he's, he, he does very similar stuff to what we're doing, um, and he's looking at steaming up the coast. He's currently doing a little bit of work in his engine bay and things like that, and he's, once that's done, he's looking at steaming up the coast to, to Bundaberg, where we are, um, hauling out and potentially even being beside us um, as he does uh, a bit more sandblasting because there's more capabilities in this yard than where he is. Um, so yeah, that'd be pretty awesome if we could have like the two boats side by side and um, yeah, it'll give you a good idea of what he does on his channel and stuff. But in the meantime, check it out and I uh, hope you enjoy. And um, yeah, I just want to say I'm so envious of all the tools he has. Yeah. <laughs> he has some bloody awesome tools. Yeah, he does. Beautiful. So whatever holds those clothes has to be pretty serious because yeah, we're going to have water over the bag yeah, all the decent. time yeah 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 they look really gorgeous yeah they're lovely eh yeah i think when they're alloy they'll be neat because they'll be quite light because they're quite small mm. they're only 400 mil wide and whatever that height is 600 or something you're going to have to make them quite strong for to be alloy yeah, I think I'll probably make them out of 6mm or, or maybe even 8mm. Right. Although I suppose if it's a bad enough storm it would crash them open. Yeah, no one's going outside if it's that bad. No. They can fling open, do the damage they like and then we'll deal with it in the morning. That's right. Yeah. Make new ones if they're gone. Yeah. yeah. But that would be a very, very serious storm. And, and for it to be that bad, to be breaking stuff, the rest of the boat's going to be struggling anyway probably. Mm. But so we won't. So we won't be having that experience. <laughs> well, the flip side is, I was just thinking, if that's the case, I haven't built them strong enough anyway. So mm. I need to. I need to do something that's stupid strong. Yeah, we do. I think we do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, definitely. I but not, not only for water, I was just thinking if I, back in, if I back into a wharf or something like that, if I do something dumb with the boat. Yeah. I don't want the back end to cave in and just give up. Mm, I kind of mm. want it to put up a bit of a fight. Yeah, good. Yep, definitely going to be out in way. Yeah, I'd say so. Mm. They're gorgeous, I really like them. Yeah, they're lovely. Thank you for building them. That's okay. Thank you, Richard. Actually, it was you that told me to put a hole in the back end of the boat. <laughs> yeah, you said, I said, I, I'm sick and tired of lifting my welder up and over the back end of the boat. You said, well, cut it off. <laughs> that sounds like me. So I fucking did. <laughs> <laughs>